I do not have this record. Oh, it is going. It did it already. Oh, it didn't tell me. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm going to chop that part off the. Yeah. Anyway. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. I don't even know what day it is, but um, I think it's Tuesday. It's Monday. <laughs> the 7th. Yeah. I'm <laughs> off. I'm just off. Um, if everybody can please add your name to the agenda and tell us something that's good in your life. And I will tell you what mine is. And that's this right here. Pumpkin spice Cheerios. Yes, it is pumpkin I'm spice season. I see. All about it. I'm 100% that person. That Have is. you had them ever? Yes, I had them oh, this morning. All right. I didn't They're know delicious. if you bought them on a whim or like you're a return customer. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't remember having them before when I saw them in the grocery store. So I was extremely excited and I went home and um, yes, I ate them this morning. So maybe that's why I'm a little off. I don't know. I won't, I won't make that correlation causation problem, but they are delicious nonetheless. So, hey, Ooh, there we go. go. All about it. But that's pumpkin, oh, it's pumpkin oh, spice goodness. everywhere. You should get a yes. pumpkin spice t shirt. Season, yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Labor Day is past. Pumpkin spice season is upon us. It is. Thank goodness. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pumpkin spice party now. Sorry to everyone who is a hater, but it's delicious. So, um, okay. It is the actual special super monthly edition. Uh, of our community meeting where we go around and do a quick update of all of our working groups and get everybody caught up on what's happening in the rest, in the nooks and crannies of the project. So um, that's what's on the agenda. Um, if you have anything else to add, please do that. And we'll hopefully get a chance to talk about that. So without further ado, uh, let's jump in. So the first one is the risk working group. Who would like to, Sean, I assume that you would take that gauntlet? Uh, Sophia can do it if she wants. I was pointing to Sean. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going to say it because I think I saw the Lipier metric go through GitHub. Yep. So that means yes. we submitted now two metrics into the review process. We have I believe we have, yes. So we, we kind of had a, bumped up our meeting a week early so that we could get in one more metric into the release cycle. So. Um, I don't know, I think that was what we accomplished last time. So yeah, that that's, and we have a list of minimum viable met metrics, MVMs that we are pursuing for the next release. Um, and then there's also, I think we did get a late stage talk accepted um, that Sean will be leading at OSSNA. Yep, we did. So I think that- Sean has to get will, the details on that. <laughs> the next meeting will be helping Sean to flesh that out. Um, I'll be at the event so I can be in the back seating questions if needed. Is it a, it's a talk, not like a panel or anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have, yeah, I believe so. I just, yeah, I'm well, only 99.9% like .9 sure of that, but congrats. My email, the email came on a Friday and then the semester started and so I have to go back and find it. which Sophia's comment reminds me to do. <laughs> I'd be curious what it's about, if uh, you're comfortable sharing it. Um, yeah, of course. Thank you. Are you gonna tell us, Sean? Well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm looking up the, so we submitted a few things. And so I'm uh, just, why don't we move on to another working group and I'll- I, come, I think I know what me. it was, Sean. I think- Okay. We had, so in the dependency, well, the risk working group, we've been talking a lot about dependencies and we spent the first few months just trying to agree on a common language and framework and a way to approach it just because it's fairly untenable as a concept. Um, so finding ways to break up categories of dependencies and then how we might actually tackle individual metrics within that. And then thinking not only about the metric, but sort of additional filters and ways that you can provide context around what that metric means. So you can report a number, but what do you do with that number beyond flag mm -hmm. it and then go investigate whether or not it needs more or less your organization. So a lot of our discussions have been trying to come up with that framework and approach. And I think one of the goals we had with presenting this at a conference was to kind of test it <laughs> to see if others could either agree or come to agreement on what we had proposed or suggest ideas and concepts that we hadn't considered because it is, 
it is a big hairy problem. Um, and I think what a thing that we want to accomplish, at least in chaos and in, in this working group, is just to come up with a way to have agreement in how we talk about these things. Um, and we spent like so much time even discussing like downstream, upstream terms that we use all the time. Um, but when we talk specifically about dependencies, how do we make sure that we're explicitly all on the same page? Um, so at least that was sort of my thought in terms of what you would present, Sean. But yep. you that, sounds, that, that sounds right. I'm just <laughs> making sure that I have the, I'm just searching my email right now. So I think that's correct. I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure that's exactly what it was. I linked to it in the chat. I, I think that second link I put in should take right to that talk. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe just look on the schedule. But it's a shortened link, so I can't really tell. Yeah, there was a weird chain of emails because it was first waitlisted. Awesome. Any other questions or comments for the risk working group? Did you get your, did you get those metrics into the translate repo, the translation repo too? Yes. Thank you. I think the stream is there. I'm not sure about the beer. Pretty mm -hmm. sure I did. I'll, I'll double oh. check, but I went through the checklist when I did the PR and merged it right after our meeting last week. Because I know Yahoi has been doing a lot of translations. Okay, I'll make sure that's in there. Okay, there's plenty of time. Yeah. Okay, let's move on then uh, to evolution. And I'm gonna throw that back at Sean one more time. Um, evolution released one metric in this period and um, that's, and we have a list of 11 metrics that we're working on for the coming period. So we encourage you, anyone that's interested to join us at um, our week, our biweekly meetings. So we'll meet again in two weeks, uh, the hour before this. So September 21st, um, the hour before this, the day after my birthday, in case you wanted to know, want to give me something. On my calendar. Um, it's a yeah, we have a lot of uh, unfinished works, and we moved the meeting just because it was on a it was a early these nine o'clock meetings and some be working. So we're hoping to draw a little bit more interest into the evolution working group. We have some exciting new metrics proposed. Are, how are you feeling in the evolution working group? Because if you recall, like when chaos started, evolution was like the first working group kind of out of the gate because there were a lot of metrics that. This was member array, your growth maturity and decline. That was this this was this working group. And there were a lot of metrics that were pretty easy to yeah, kind of um, you know, like issue related stuff and PR related stuff. Do you still feel like there's there's definitely some, some like there's definitely still still a lot of things that, that are to be done. Okay. I, I think the momentum of the group is lower than other working groups right now probably because we already have so many metrics. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, there might be a general impression that we're done, but I, I think there are some metrics that we're looking at. If folks want to take a glance at the evolution spreadsheet, um, there's there's 11 that we plan to work on for the next okay. cycle. And um, most, most of them are related to uh, different ways of looking at community health, obviously. Okay. as a function of participation in a project. There are, uh, there are a lot of metrics in, in uh, evolution that just really aren't exciting either, right? They, so no, they need to be defined and we need to do the work on them, but they're not, they're not super exciting. So I think there's a, a little bit of it is a kind of, we just need to like put in the work and define some of these, these, these base level activity metrics that we all know exist that we just haven't, we just haven't put on paper yet. Okay. Uh, uh, so interestingly, I just got the notification of acceptance, like right during this meeting for the talk. Congratulations. Um, and it is exactly the talk Sophia was talking about. What happened earlier was I, they said I was a speak, we were accepted. And so they gave back the money I paid to register. <laughs> 
Um, but I guess that wasn't actually the notification of talk acceptance. And now it's just flowed in right here as we're talking. So that's why I was confused. You could have just blamed the pumpkin spice Cheerios. So yeah. yeah, confusion Mine. all around. <laughs> Okay, um, questions about evolution. Also, just a note, uh, Libnier did not make it into the translations repo. All right, I'll fix that. All right, let's move on then to the DEI working group. There's quite a few uh, metrics that were released. So I don't know if anybody wants to take that. If not, I can. Go ahead. OK. Um, so yeah, we released five metrics um, for this release cycle. So and the, everything is linked also for all the working groups. Everything's linked in those minutes. So please go there and make sure that you're you know, giving feedback if you can, if you have time, because um, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, uh, there, we did, I did leave space for the DEI badging, um, initiative later on in the agenda today, um, to talk about a little bit separately, but, um, we can talk about it now. Um, yeah, I think maybe the one with respect to these metrics, there are a few metrics that are event related. And so now that <clears throat> they're going to be part of the release, I think Matt Cantu, is going to be integrating those metrics in the next version, version 2.0, 3.0, whatever, for the event badging program. So for example, like time inclusion for virtual events is not something that the reviewers necessarily take a look at, um, but they will for the next version. And Matt's working on that. And as always, those meetings continue to happen weekly. So um, highly encourage anyone who's interested in, in the, these topics to join it at that time. Um, yeah, anything else to add? That's pretty much it. All right. No, all good. OK, the next working group is value. Vinod, do you want to talk about that? Uh, so we released two metrics, academic open source project impact and organization influence. And right now we are working on a fair metric uh, with, uh, on which the discussion is going on. So we meet on every alternative Thursday, nine in the morning. So everyone is welcome. And please take a look at these two. Neither of those value release metrics made it to the uh, uh, uh there translation are, repo they are already translated and i think they have closed the issue so they are already translated i had looked at both if we had been doing a lot of translations in the last like two days so maybe it happened then so i don't i don't see a closed issue for them uh and then additionally they should be they should be tagged that they need to be Spanish translated as well. So they would actually stay open. We wouldn't close them. Okay, I look in it because I looked at the Chinese translation, both were uh, already translated in the Chinese, so. Okay, so the, the work may have been done uh, without the issue, but the issue does still need to be created. Okay, I'll do it. And and you can just, uh, if it's if it's been done, in Chinese, just make sure it gets tagged with the Spanish language translation tag. Oh, OK. I have a question about that as an aside. Who's doing the Spanish translation? Do we have a team working on that? Not at the moment. Do we need to like put a call out for that? or? It yeah, probably so. I was think, I think. Um, this was really the first release that we started doing translation. So it was nice to just kind of see the process with um, the folks who are willing to do the Chinese translation. So maybe this next round, we could start kind of building that out. Gotcha. 
there was actually so much that changed in this release round with the work that Yash and Ratik had done in terms of the automated release process and translation. So we added like two <laughs> pretty big things for this round. Yeah, I agree with that. At this point, it's uh, let's see how the release goes and then maybe do a lessons learned and and a call for the, the Spanish translation team. Okay, that sounds good. All right, um, so any other questions around value working group? I just have a question for clarification on the translation. I know we, have, we discussed this long ago, but as the translation is getting along, is there any kind of uh, way to monitor or to trace? I don't, maybe trace is not the right word here, just to make sure what is being intent is the kind of things that people really translated, let's say in Mandarin, that most of us cannot understand the end uh, product. Is there a way of controlling that this kind of uh, things, people don't really go outside the scope of what they were doing? I know it's hard to do, but I'm just asking like, how do we make sure that things still stay within certain framework of the main context? So that's a good question, Armstrong, because like to your point, like I don't speak Mandarin, so I, I can't really check. And I suspect most of the people on this call don't either. Um, so with respect to the check, um, we at least follow the chaos procedure of not merging your own PR. So I know that when, say, for example, Yahui does the translation, that somebody else will do a check on that PR for the translation. So that's about the best that we have at the moment. I don't know if you have other thoughts in this regard, but it's a good question. Okay, I think I would just suggest we make a kind of disclaimer that chaos is not really controlling and responsible for the translation. We trust the people who are doing it and we just take it as is. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could say like something like, uh, maybe not a disclaimer, but like, um, this is a translation and <laughs> something may be lost in the translation, but we do our best to make sure they're aligned or something like that. Yeah. Okay. I think it's helpful too that we we have actual like chaos community members who are making those translations. So, you know, they they understand what we're about and what what these metrics are are supposed to represent. And I have seen Yukoi um make uh comments or or ask questions if there was something that didn't quite translate one for one. So I know that he's um, aware of any kind of issues that may not translate directly. And so I think when he posts that in the translation repo, then the, the whole team kind of decides how to move forward with how it should read. That's kind of my been my understanding of how it's been going, but I can speak to that different. Uh, just one observation to the translation, like I was looking at the translated version, Chinese and uh, there's a Google option to translate it back to English. So when I tried to translate the Chinese back to the English, there was some context loss, but I was not sure because it's a contextual thing. And But there is some language difference when you translate it back to the English through Google translation. Yeah, I think that's that's going to happen though. If you when you when you translate something into Chinese and then back into English, that, that's always going to be an issue. Any other questions or comments about translation? Okay, um, we can move on to Common then, Common Working Group. Um, Common had the most metrics released with six total metrics for review. Um, Matt, you wanna add anything? Um, no, the bot activity metric is the best in this group. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Y'all can guess who um, had that idea. 
Maybe. Yeah, that was a really good idea. I don't remember <laughs> who had that idea or who wrote it, but it was really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> the winners. Yes, they're the winners. Um, yeah, anything, uh, any other questions for Common? No, I think maybe just here at the end to like all working groups, like it's just, it's really just amazing, right? When we take a look and there's like another dozen metrics across all working groups. It's just, it's really just great work to everybody. Yeah, y'all are doing amazing work. You're rock stars, basically. Okay, so let's- I, I will say this, I will say this too. I am starting to see more and more references to the chaos metrics and just, the metrics kind of serving as a as a default way of talking about community health and like to Sophia's point earlier on dependencies like how just this whole conversation it's kind of wide ranging just health in general and you know sometimes more particularly like Sean you had mentioned commits a long time ago and Sophia you mentioned dependencies so it's it's just really nice to kind of see these come together and provide you know, some, some sort of, of language that people can use to talk about either health broadly or, or you know, smaller issues, um, say smaller issues like dependencies, like that tiny issue of dependencies, but, you know, like kind of more localized things. So that's, that's great. I agree. So let's move on to metric models, which is our newest shiny new working group that we have. Um, not sure who wants to take this one. I can. Well, I'll, I'll take this one. So to this end, so as as we have all, all of these metrics, and they are individual metrics nonetheless. And I, I do think that, um, and Lucas, you can you can add too, because I know you've been part of these conversations. That sometimes, if you're new to community health, just looking at a list of say 70 metrics. Like, what do I do? <laughs> this is like, how do I even begin? So the metrics model working group is kind of saying, like, here are, here are a set of metrics that can go together that provide insight in a particular way. And a, a, an actual working example that we have right now is the, the DEI event badging program. So Matt and the team there has brought together the DEI event metrics to provide meaningful impact, at least in that space. So, um, so the metrics model group is, is really looking to, to kind of bring metrics together, bring metrics together in ways that are meaningful for people, that it's not just a list of 70 metrics. And we're working, I'll put that in the chat. Here's the spreadsheet. Spread. So here's the spreadsheet to the metrics model working group. And we're only working from existing chaos, chaos metrics. So we're not trying to necessarily reimagine new metrics, but we're, we're working with you know, the metrics that may exist in risk, they may exist in evolution, they may exist in DEI, whatever they are. And they're brought together um, for, for a particular, you know, kind of why you might care kind of thing in that column C. So um, we've only met twice, something like that. And we've made really crazy good progress in terms of thinking about how we organize this work. And then Kevin is also kind of working on the website as well so that we can filter on the list of 70 metrics to only show the ones that are kind of meaningful for a particular model. Um, that we define. So it's, it's really nice. It's a way to kind of filter through sometimes the, the noise that could be 70 metrics to somebody and say, here are the five metrics that can really help you if you care about this particular scenario. It may not be the five perfect metrics, but it's, it's five that can kind of move you in the right direction. So, so that's it. And just to add uh, um, to what uh, Matt said, <clears throat> we I think envision building those metrics in a similar way, 
um, that we do our atomic metrics. So using a template that would look very similar, we would kind of go through that same process in that working group. So um, if that is something that's of interest to you, we highly recommend that you join those meetings. And they're happening bi-weekly at 6 p.m. Central, U.S. Central Chicago time uh, every other Tuesday. So not today, but next Tuesday will be the next one. Um, and the, we need to get that. I just remember we need to get that on the participate page. Now that we're kind of not, I don't think so. We may not have gotten it there yet. Okay. Yeah, we we absolutely need to get that on there. Um, and also the agenda uh, may be a little tricky because it's um, in SharePoint, not our usual Google Docs. So if you are joining those meetings, you need help getting access to that. You can just reach out to Matt G and he can uh, get, grant you access to, <clears throat> to those agenda notes. Um, okay, questions for that group. Who has questions? Lucas just conveniently dropped off, but that's okay. We can still answer them. Going once, going twice. All right, well, we'll move ahead then. Um, the next group is the DEI badging. And Matt C is not on the call today, but I can let you all know that they um, are definitely looking for more reviewers. So if this is something that's of interest to you, please reach out to Matt. He has a form to fill out, which I don't have the link to sadly, um, but he can send it to you. And uh, <clears throat> it just gives your, you know, you just give him your information and he can get you started. Um, it's really a great way to have a meaningful impact on the events that open source community is hosting. Um, because we have seen changes being made to events based on our recommendations and, and going through the process. So um, it's a really good way to have some action if this is something that is important to you personally, um, or you would like to support the Chaos Project with some extra time. And it's not a lot of time. It's maybe 20 minutes um, a week, maybe. Um, so uh, if you'd like to do that, we would love to have that. Uh, just reach out to Matt Canton. And he has it all documented. It's not hard. Um, like it's all written out very well. And he will help you train to, to know what you're doing. So if, even if you have no idea what you're doing at all, do not worry a bit. Matt will get you on your merry way. So, um, and like Matt uh, G mentioned earlier, they are re, uh, doing a ver next version of the yeah. badging program that will add in more metrics. And so it will become a little more difficult for people to get that gold badge. Um, we're, you know, asking for a little more, a few more things. <laughs> so, um, which is good. That's how you make progress. So, <clears throat> and those badges are versioned, I believe, so that, you know, people will have to reapply for their, their events later on. So, um, yeah. Any questions about the DEI badging initiative? No, I think it's going really well. I believe Matt and uh, Ruth also uh, had a talk accepted at OSSNA on the DEI badging program. So that's really great. Um, I, I don't they might be talking about it at all things open too. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. So good for them. So in here, by the way, here is the, just so people can kind of track. Um, this is the current events, set of events that are badged. In fact, one was just badged today. A leads meetup. I think it's part of the fin, FinOS or FinOS group. Yeah, I think that's really cool to see um, even super small events that are literally just through meetup.com still applying and still trying to make it the best that they can. It's it's really great. It's really great to see. I totally agree. And I, I love that all of the conversations you can see like on any of those issues, you can watch, you can track the entire conversation about how the badging occurs. And like, you know, you like, don't forget to add a link to your code of conduct and the response like done. And, you know, so it's kind of this developmental process just through the uh, through the application, it's not just a here's the application, <laughs> no conversation. We badge or we don't badge, so it's it's really great. All right, any questions, comments? Hmm. 
Nothing. All right. Um, I put on the agenda a chaos con update. I don't know if we have one or we need to give one if people care or not. Well, I have to get okay, so I have to get new t-shirts. <laughs> I got yeah, so okay, so I got t-shirts. I'm trying to get them. The the logo is really high on the chest. So imagine like Imagine like up here, like too high. Like it's like way up high, and so it it's not what I had ordered. So anyway, I have fifty T-shirts with this too high logo, and <laughs> I I'm trying to get more without paying for it. Um, so I, I may have fifty because I can't imagine they want them back. <laughs> but I, I may have fifty with the too high logo, which by chance might become the cool T-shirt because that's the mistaken T-shirt, you know, like the the more collectible version yeah the more collectible like the upside like the, down airplanes on stamps that are worth yeah. a lot of money i'm not a stamp collector but whatever i've heard um, such things exist yes exactly so anyway i'll bring i'll bring some of the collectible t-shirts and the more regular ones so anyway if you get a t-shirt if i can't fix it and you get a t-shirt in seattle don't complain about the logo being too high i know <laughs> so that's it that's my only update. Um, we have some things to discuss as part of the, the committee meeting in terms of tracking. I guess the general update is that we sent out uh, notifications last week, or is that, a, I guess, two weeks ago, because I was on vacation last week, and Ray had asked everyone to confirm by the end of the week. So we pretty much have all of our talks confirmed. We're still waiting on some attendance uh, it's showing up to be about 50 percent of our speakers want to be in person so um, that'll mean that we'll probably will have some interspersed recorded sessions um, the i think that most up in the air is that emma Irwin might not be able to attend uh, who's we want to be your keynote speaker um, she would be coming from canada and is concerned about travel restrictions so um, something I'd like to talk about in the breakout meeting is if we have any sort of flexibility of format, I think for the other sessions, I'm okay to do a pre-record and then either record questions. I know we had talked about doing that sort of live, a live stream after the fact where we would re-host the session and then be able to have the speakers on a Zoom where we could have more of a QA afterward to make that more interactive just because I think the in-person room and sort of the live stream interactions are going to be a little bit awkward. Um, but it seems like we're going to try to split out the agenda such that we're not sitting in a room watching a bunch of recorded sessions and vice versa. So we'll have some interspersed. Um, but I'll be proposing an agenda to the chaos committee as soon as the general meeting is over. Um, and we'd hope to have that finalized by the end of the week so we can put it on the website. Um, Kevin will plus you when that's ready. All right, thank you, Sophia. Awesome update. Um, we can go ahead and I don't think we have anything else for the general meeting, unless anybody has any final questions, comments, anything? Nope, all good. All right, we'll go ahead and close our community meeting. And then those of you who are on CASCON committee, please hang around, um, everybody else. Have a great day, great week. Get some pumpkin spice in you, you'll feel better immediately. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay.